we started a brand new series called Unleashed. As you can see, it's the, uh, the Acts Church today. We're looking at um, it's from a book that Gavin and Anne Carver have written. And it's uh, just a really encouragement to think about how we do church, how we are church based, looking on the exploits of the early church in the book of Acts. So there's lots to learn. And Andy, as I say, kicked us off looking at a bit of a systems check for the, the potential and the power of God to, to be at work and the Holy Spirit to be poured out in our lives. Worth watching that if you weren't here last week, available on YouTube. But this morning, I want to talk about being unleashed people. Do you feel like you're somebody who's unleashed in the things of God, in the power of God, moving in his spirit? Maybe you feel a bit like not so much unleashed. Maybe you feel a bit contained, flat. But today I want to just encourage us from the book of Acts and look at what was happening then, but also how we can learn and apply it to our lives today. I want to just read uh, and I want you to use your imagination today uh, of this, what this community could look like. Let me just read this out to you. Imagine a community. They devoted themselves to whatever they wanted. Everyone was filled with worry at the circumstances surrounding them. They kept their wealth they had for themselves and shared with others only when they felt they had to. The believers would meet only occasionally and only when their busy lives enabled them to. Their homes were their islands and would rarely eat with other people. They were full of fear and skepticism the believers talked about everything except for the resurrection of Jesus. They focused on themselves and spent their days seeking affirmation from each other. And nobody was added to their number. It's a bit bleak, isn't it? <laughs> Those that know their Bible know that's not in the scriptures. <laughs> that's not the community that we long for. And actually, we can be greatly encouraged today that actually what it says in the scriptures is quite the opposite from that. The book of Acts speaks about this community that is alive in the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit has just come upon them and they're speaking in tongues and there's a great move of God. And we see numbers of people that were added to the church that day. The church comes alive. It didn't just exist, but it came alive. And that's what we want today. That's what I want for me. That's what I want for each of us here today. So let's read what actually happened in the book of Acts. We're going to look at Acts chapter 2. And then also four, but looks at what it is, a snapshot of the church just a few days into its birth. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's more like it, isn't it? <laughs> it goes on to say in Acts chapter 4, another or this community that's been formed here in the early church. It says, all the believers were in one heart, in mind, no one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them that all there were, there were no needy, no needy people among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Some community that is, isn't it? As you read it, I don't know what stood out to you from that uh, about what was happening. It's this incredible community that was formed. You could almost feel like it was radical to what we can sometimes experience or feel today. But what I want to say is that following Jesus is exciting. Come on. Following Jesus is an adventure it's challenging, you know, it doesn't call us to be easy, but it's exciting. And we can see here just what God was doing at work in their lives and a community that is being formed. We all need community, don't we? You know, we talk about the young people, but we all need community. And that's what church is. It's a gathering of God's people. It's not just the building. You know, sometimes we can think of 
going to church. That's often a phrase we use. But it's not just to a building or a specific place. But as we can see here, it's the people. Wherever we are, when we gather, we are church. Sometimes we use that phrase, don't we? Like, you are in the middle of church. You are the church. Wherever you go, whatever you do. But when we gather together, we can build one another up. We can share. We can live out some of these things that we heard and read about just now. It's actually community church. It's in our name, isn't it? We don't just want that to be a sign over our door, but we want it to be lived out experience when we connect with one another. People come in, they feel a sense of community. At Pentecost, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, the gathering of what was about 120 exploded. They saw amazing things happen and what God was doing. And I long for, the, for more of that. You know, it's not just for then. You know, the Holy Spirit is alive and at work in us today. And we need him more, don't we? But I want to just look at this passage and just unpack some things, some actions of what a spirit-filled community looks like and what it does to be uh, practicing this out. So firstly, a community that is de devoted to discipleship. What does that mean? Well, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. You know, there's so many things that we can be devoted to, isn't there? Our priorities can be pulled at all different places, and not all of them are bad. But actually, if we're going to be a spirit-filled community, if we're going to see God really move in and through our lives, we've got to devote ourselves, haven't we, to what God wants for us. This was a big shift in my life personally. When I was growing up, as Jamie, like we, we were in the same youth group growing up. Um, and I remember coming to church, just it, like receiving and receiving and I come to a point where I was like, well, that, you know, they don't do this anymore or they don't provide that for me. And it was a bit inward and a bit selfish. And I remember there's almost like a turning point in my life where God was like, why don't you give back? <laughs> why don't you serve? Why don't you contribute? Why don't you help rather than constantly receiving? And I made a conscious choice, not just in serving, but to choose to follow Jesus for myself, to take that responsibility, to be devoted to these things, to teaching, to receiving from God, to fellowship that community, breaking of bread and to prayer. So I encourage you, I devote myself to my relationship with Jesus and with helping others in theirs. That's the first thing we do. Secondly, a community that cares for the needs of others, not just for themselves. I don't know if anybody in the room, I certainly haven't. Has anybody sold their house and um, you know, brought their money to help the needs of somebody else? <laughs> Maybe there's somebody is, I don't know. Um, it's pretty big, isn't it? But what it was, it wasn't just radical generosity, but there was a sense of actually, when one person suffers, we all suffer. There's a sense of actually somebody else is in need in our community and I can actually help. What a privilege that is for us to share and care with the needs of others. But before we can offer care, we need to see the needs of those around us, don't we? Sometimes I can be just so focused on my day-to-day -day and doing my thing that I neglect the needs of those around me. And I think it's really important as we live in a consumer society where we like to receive and we maybe um, just comes naturally, but we want to be people that are outward looking. What are the needs in your community? What are the needs, not just in Sturchley, but in our families, in, our, in the places that we work? We want to be people who care for the needs of others. Thirdly, a, a community that I would say are stewards, not owners. I'm just going through some of the things that were listed in the, in the book of Acts that we read. This community that was so alive for Jesus, that they were people that were, didn't just feel like it was theirs. They almost had open hearts to the people around them, but they also had open hands to receive the blessings, but also for that to overflow and flow through them. I would love that more in my life, to not just think, what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? But how can it flow through me to be a blessing to those around us? I heard somebody once say, I can't remember who said it, but they said, we can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. We cannot give without loving, but we cannot love 
Oh, there you go, Amy Carmichael. You know, and I think it's so important that we, when we love other people, there's a sense of giving, not just financially. Obviously, that's radical generosity again we read in the book of Acts. But what about our time, our resources, you know, other things that we can bless people with? We want to be people who are stewards and that, that are generous with others. I want to be a steward of all the things that God has given to us. Every good thing is from God, isn't it? Every good thing. Fourthly, we want to be a people, a community that meet regularly, not just occasionally. Every day, they continued to meet together in temple courts. Every day. I mean, I, I know life is very different today, but I think there's something of the importance of meeting regularly with other believers, people that can help you, encourage you, or maybe you can strengthen them. But I think that it's really important that we make it a priority, as many of you are in the room and those joining online, to connect with one another. Not just because what we need, but because others might need us. That community spirit. And I want to just read, I came across this poem I was reading a couple of weeks ago, and it just really encouraged me. It talks about collaboration and the importance of working together, but also our need for one another. It's called No Place for Islands by Chuck Swindle. It says this, Nobody is a whole chain. Each one is a link. But take away one link and the chain is broken. Nobody is a whole team. Each one is a player. But take one, one player away and the game is forfeited. No one is a whole orchestra. Each one is a musician. But take away one musician and the symphony is incomplete. Nobody is a whole play. Each one is an actor, but take away one actor and the performance suffers. Nobody is a whole hospital. Each one is a part of the staff, but take away one person and it isn't long before the patient can tell. You guessed it, we need each other. You need somebody and somebody needs you. Isolated islands we're not. And to make this thing called life work, we've got to lean and support, relate and respond, give and take, confess and forgive, reach out and embrace, release and rely. And he goes on to say, since none of us is a whole, independent, self-sufficient, super capable, all-powerful hotshot, let's quit acting like we are. Life's lonely enough without our playing at that silly role. And he says, the game's over. Let's link up. What a beautiful poem, isn't it? I think just reminding us the importance and the need. We need each other. And the, the believers in the early church, they knew that. That it wasn't just a, a community that, of dependence on each other, but also it made the, the mission more effective, more fun, more enjoyable. So I'd encourage you, Think about the times and the places. Meet with one another. Make it a pro If somebody hasn't invited you, invite them. I, I know it's sometimes difficult with our diaries as well, but I, I really believe that we're going to see God do great things, but we need each other in that. What else did they do? Well, they're a community that opened their homes and ate together. We like eating together, don't we? At, at church, we often have bring and share lunches and we're going to have another one next month. And, you know, we've got, um, bacon rolls next week we've got other things coming up we like our food but there's something about eating together as well that really almost uh, breaks down barriers and builds bridges and you connect with people in a different way when you're around the table I mean that's why we we've kept the tables because there's something about you know sharing and loving in a way that we perhaps can't otherwise the early church they broke bread in their homes and ate together I don't know if you've ever been to somebody's house and you then don't see them in a different way, but you relate to them and connect them in a way that you perhaps didn't before. You might see their, their, their taste of color <laughs> in their walls. Uh, you might see photo frames. On, on the, you might see magnets on their fridge. Um, you might see that the way they treat you when, when you come in, whether they're really hospitable. But I think that when we welcome people into our homes, we welcome people into our lives. 
I think it's really important. You know, I know not everybody is able to, and it's maybe sometimes challenging practically. But I think, you know, I've been to some communities around the world, actually, where the front door is always open. <laughs> I mean, that might not work, you know, in certain parts of Birmingham. I get that. <laughs> but, you know, there's something of an openness to what God wants to do. You know, when we invite people into our homes and we say, come on in, I invite you into my family. We're in this together. We're brothers and sisters. You know, we love each other. It builds trust as well, doesn't it? There's a vulnerability in some of that as well. They get to know the real, our real selves. During the pandemic, we, did, uh, we perhaps didn't quite open our homes, but we opened our gardens. Those that were here during that time, we did garden gatherings when we weren't able to be inside. And I think there's something of a community spirit where we, again, whether it's a cup of tea or a cake or, you know, I'm not a great cook, so I struggle with um, <laughs> the host in Moyo is brilliant at cooking and thankful for that. But, you know, whether you just want to meet for a meal in a restaurant, that takes the pressure off, doesn't it? <laughs> there's something about when we eat together, when we open our homes, that we're, we see God work in our lives in a way that we might not have done before. Also, just a couple more. But I want you to, as we're just listing these, think about maybe one or two that you think, actually, yeah, I may be God's nudging me in this, or maybe something I can step into a little bit more. This next one, I think you could say is quite challenging, but I think it's one of the most important. It says, a community that testifies to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. With great power, the apostles continue to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You know, we're not just a, a group of people that are lovely and nice to have a cup of tea, uh, as good as that is, and nice to have a chat and spend time together. The thing that unites us is Jesus Christ. The thing that unites us is the gospel of Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he rose again, and that those who come to him uh, will not perish but have everlasting life. You know, and I think that we must never grow tired of telling people the good news of Jesus that he loves them, that he has a plan for their life. And I think sometimes we don't know, always know how to say it. And we don't, we, you know, how do we bring this in? You know, it, what we, if we don't have all the right things to say, you know, we can grow in that. We can practice that. We can develop that. But we must never shy away from it and let that be something that we leave to other people. Uh, I feel that it, it's, it's so front and center. What did Jesus say? He said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. That's not just for certain people. I believe that we've all got a responsibility, not just to share it with our words, but for our lives to show that Jesus is alive in us. I, I think that's, that's something exciting, maybe challenging, but something that is so special. You know, in your schools, in, in your workplaces, in your families, in your neighborhoods, wherever you are, I feel there's a, a, a challenge and a, and a call for us to, to live that as if the Spirit of God lives in us, because that's what the Bible says. <laughs> the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. But we want to be people who testify to that. That's what uh, we read in Romans. Uh, it, it speaks about that, that reality of Jesus being alive in us. The world around us doesn't just need a nice church, but it needs a loving church with the power of God in our lives demonstrated in word and deed, the believing in the truth of the gospel and the power of who he is. So I wonder, will we be people that share with others the reality of the risen Jesus in our lives? And then lastly, to be a church, to be a community that praises God. Whatever happens in our lives, we want to choose to be intentional, to praise God. Not just on Sundays, not just in this building, but we want to be people, again, if we want to see that, that, that work of God in our lives and see this uh, spirit-filled community that welcomes people, that sees amazing things, praise should just flow from our tongues. It should be something that, again, we don't just need to wait for our favorite song to come on, but we praise God for his love, for what he's done. Just think of all, your, all the blessings, and I often say this, all the good things that God has done. I don't know if you need a reason to praise him this morning. But we should never stop praising him. 
Rejoice always, pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, it says, for this is God's will for your life. The early church with sincere hearts were praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. Is this something we want? Is this something that we want in our lives? You know, I think as we look back, I, I, I think it can sometimes seem far away. But this is, we, we still worship and we live for and we still experience the same God that they did in the book of Acts. And I pray as we just dwell on these just for a few moments this morning, I wonder which one of these, these seven areas, including the community that praises God, which one maybe do you feel that, that God is just prompting you in this morning? Saying, Lord, maybe I just need to step out in this a little bit more. Maybe I just need to practice that. But God, will you help me in it? Will you guide me? Um, some of it is very practical today and some things we can apply straight away. Others, it may just need a little bit more time or God's, God's strength to, to actually fulfill this. But I really believe that as we do this, as we live this out, we'll see amazing things. And actually, it's really attractive to those around us. This is so attractive to people, you know, longing for community, caring, sharing, inviting people in, meeting together, joyfully praising God. People will be like, why do you go to church? Why, what is church for you? Why do you do those things? And actually, what a wonderful opportunity to witness and to invite people in and to share um, Jesus with them. I wonder, let's, let's just come and pray. But would you stand with me and invite the team to come back and lead us in a closing song in a moment? I know I've, I've gone through those relatively quickly today. But as we just leave them on the screen for a, a moment, I want, let's just invite God to, again, just prompt us in this. We read his word. We thank you, God, for how it speaks to us and it teaches us. But Lord, help us to grow in this, not just again in understanding, but in the application of your word in our lives. It's when we put into practice your word, Lord, that change happens, when transformation in our lives, but in our community. I think we were singing earlier, set your church on fire, Lord. Lord, we want to see, Lord, not just hype or uh, excitement in uh, a way that doesn't matter, but Lord, we want to see your spirit at work in our lives. We want to see more of you in and through us, God. But God, just in these moments right now, will you just encourage us, speak to us? What is it that you want us to take away from today? Individually, personally, yes, we are a community and it's a, a collective corporate responsibility. But Lord, today, what do you want me to do as we go from this place, God? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just as we're waiting on God and the Spirit, just believe that he'll just maybe put a person in our heart and in our mind to, to reach out to or connect with over the coming weeks. They might already know Jesus and walking with him, or they might not. But I just pray that whoever maybe the Lord puts on your heart 
today that you'll be encouraged and, and maybe just do something with that and to reach out, invite them, meet up with them, pray with them maybe. But God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you that you are alive and active, God. Lord, that your spirit is alive in us today. We thank you that you walk with us, that you guide us, you comfort us, you strengthen us. Holy Spirit, Lord, where would we be without you, God? But Lord, I pray as we read of what was happening in this community in the early church, Lord, that that may not just be a distant memory or something that's written down in a book, but Lord, may it be so uh, true today, such a reality in our lives and help us, your church, to live this out. Lord, for whatever area, maybe we're stirred and encouraged by all seven, but Lord, even if it's just one thing that we take away today, will you help us to put it into practice? And may we see some wonderful things and stories coming as a result of being your church, we pray. So we ask, yeah, God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.